Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Suzerain, the political simulator and role-playing choose-your-own-adventure game, uh, which has recently had a major update, the 2.0 update, uh, which we're playing through for, well, we're playing through the 2.0 update for the second, or the first time, we're playing through Suzerain itself for the second time, but this is episode number seven of our Let's Play series. We're trying to be a little bit more evil, less goody-two-shoes-like, a little bit more willing to embrace dictatorial powers while at the same time trying to be somewhat pragmatic. So it's an interesting kind of dynamic. This was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel from a couple of weeks, actually maybe last week, uh, not that long ago. Um, and uh, we're rejoining this in progress. So without further ado, let's jump back in. Let's go to Narble. I was traveling to the snow covered city of Narble in the Nargis region of the Narbles, the people of Narbleland. Narble, Narble, Narble. For the rule development of a uh, form organized by the Minister of Health and the Ministry of Education. Guys, I don't want to give money to education or, or health. Sorry. The mountainous city of Narble had gritty tones to it. Let me spend money on the military. It was mostly regarded as one of the poorer cities in Swordland. Its people were hardy and wary. Even after the discovery of natural resources in the area, years of neglect by the central government were apparent on the buildings and the general infrastructure. Natural resources, namely gas and oil, were now under the control of Gasom, which elevated the corporation to a place of power. My task, in this form, was mainly symbolic. Fake smiles, handshakes with oil barons. I don't remember this in the original game at all. I don't even remember Gasom being a thing, so I think that might be one of the new... I know the Gasom storyline is new, but I remember going to Narble, so... Hmm. They must have, like, reworked this meeting, too, though. Uh, meeting with local politicians, but most importantly of all, making sure that Narble did not feel like it was forgotten by the government. The scenery so far, however, was a reflection of Narble's neglect. Main roads to the city were not maintained well. There were many bumps and empty discolored spots in the asphalt. Navigating and swerving to avoiding the inconsistencies, our motorcade finally started nearing the city. As if my discomfort from the bumpy ride was apparent to him, Serge rolled down the partition window. We'll be arriving at the Hotel West in a few minutes, sir. Good, whatever gets us out of here quickly. Thank you for letting me know. Anytime, it's my duty. After a moment, Serge started to smile under his moustache. What's that smile for? Sir, I just wanted to say it's been great these last two months. As you know, my wife Susan recently gave birth to our son's son, sir. And now my daughter started at a very good high school in Holsord. That's great news, Serge. I'm happy for you. I appreciate it, sir. Truly. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to afford a good private school if she scored less than the entrance exams. But I shouldn't have made my insecurity get to me. Erica outsmarts me all the time. I'm very proud to have a daughter like her. I do not value insecurity in my employees, Serge. Step it up. I also hope that Deanna will grow up to be like her mother someday. I'm sure she will, sir. After all, she is the daughter of a lion, and a lioness. My daughter looks up to the First Lady for inspiration, and it's not just limited to my daughter, sir. She's an inspiration for almost all women in the country. But at the same time, it must be hard for the First Lady as well. All this attention adjusting to a new high-profile life, and a husband that has great responsibility? You're right. It is hard for her. It must be, sir. We sometimes forget that important people in life between, bear, between all the responsibility and rush. You know, those we care for. Yes, Serge, I get it. I agree. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice while also wanting to be evil. Have I told you, sir, we named my son George? The doctor said he's very healthy and thankfully so is my wife. That's good. I hope the hospital had a good service. Normally, we would have been treated in one of the suburban hospitals, but thanks to the special coverage of the pre presidential staff, we were transferred to Emerald State Hospital. Emerald State is a great hospital. The equipment and the staff were exceptional. I've already started thinking about their university education, especially Erica. 
I want to send her to a good private school, but with the current state of the economy, it's going to be hard for us. You know what? I can support the education of your children, Serge. Negative one to personal wealth. Sure. It's always good to have your driver love you, right? What else am I going to spend the money on? Mr. President, there's no way I can. With one look for me, Serge cut a sentence short and nodded at me after removing his hand. I really should have taken that million dollar bribe from the, the rich... The other guy. I could have used more cash. I hope you return the favor by helping someone in need someday. Just like I did. That's a little bit, a little bit self-serving. Good education is more valuable than any amount of money. I won't forget your generosity, sir. The car hit a major pothole and a bump, which lifted us in our seats for a second. Are you okay? Yes, I hope the car is fine too. The Hotel West was supposedly the best hotel in Narbo. The large 25-story main building was undoubtedly one of the taller and more expensive buildings in the city. It towered over the nearby slums and had been a target for protests when it was first built. A crowd was gathered in front of the hotel with welcoming committee at its center. As we approached the red carpet entrance, I could see the mayor of Narbo and his, his top aides. Serge got out of the car and opened the door. He bowed his head respectfully and gestured toward the entrance. See you later, Serge. Thank you, sir. Likewise. As soon as I left the vehicle, the fresh air of Narble filled my lungs. Almost immediately, everybody present in the crowd flocked over to me with an excessive display of curiosity, smiles, and handshakes while I donned a mask of a politician. A mask that I was very used to. There goes my personal wealth. I hope that uh, radio company pays off eventually. Young sword suspected of a terrorist attack. God damn it. Guys, stop killing each other. PFJP report on the reforms. Without the implementation of term limits and limited decrees, it would be very difficult for him and his party to stand behind the reform package. Okay. I re arrived at the meeting room for my talk with Syria and Pascal. Before beginning, I took a moment to appreciate the view from the balcony. The mountains of Narbel were completely covered with snow. While I was mesmerized by the scenery, Pascal Bennywall walked in up to me. Hey, Ben, how you doing? Did, have you played since the new update, Ben? There's like three or four new like side storylines, and apparently the economy is much more difficult. They've got like a, a gas industry storyline, called like a gas -om, which feels kind of like gas gas whatever the name of the russian gas gas company is uh, the minister of health was ironically somewhat portly having gained a few pounds since he uh, his breakthrough best-selling writer okay such a spectacular view syria wald the minister of education joined us on the balcony dressed in a sky blue pantsuit her perf her preference for trousers over dresses had made her the subject of much palace gossip but it didn't seem to bother her in the slightest Spectacular indeed, but if you look at the opposite direction, you will see what Seoul's decades of neglect did to the city. Most of the people living in Narbel are workers, farmers, and their wives and children. They're breaking their backs for close to no pay, all thanks to greedy corporations. Whatever, I'd much rather be in Holzord right now. <laughs> you can't really blame the companies, that's just how they work. Yes, we can. Similar companies are doing much better for their workers in United, Cantana, and Arcasia. If you look past the view, you can see the real problems. Real problems like poverty. Pascal nodded gravely. This was a subject he knew quite a bit about himself. His best-known books were about the plight of Swordland's less fortunate, drawing from his own past growing up in squalor. Well put, Miss Walda. I don't need to tell you about my own experiences with poverty. I'm sure you have similar stories. Am I right, Mr. President? No, I came from a rich family. <laughs> Thankfully, we never had any problems with money. Oh, is that, is that gauche? Oh, we've all gone through difficult times. I mean, I have gone through difficult times, just not poverty. Um. Thankfully, I've never had any problems with money. Well, we've all gone through difficult times. True, but some lives are more difficult than others like ours was, and still for hundreds of thousands in Swordland. 
You don't, you don't have to have been poor to sympathize with the plight of the impoverished, much as you don't have to have been born a woman to recognize Swordland's need for parity among the sexes. Parity among the sexes shouldn't be our first priority. Look how many high-ranking female politicians our country has. Appearances can be deceiving, Pascal. Her voice sounded bitter. Thinking about how Lael's Graf got her current position, I don't necessarily believe the rumors about her and Sol, but she never could have risen so high if she didn't parrot his cause. Glory, Gloria Tory, is an accident that the first female assembly is such a staunch conservative? <clears throat> and then there was Alfonso's habit of promoting women to prominent positions to give Swordlands a pr Swordland a progressive sheen while accomplishing nothing in reality. While women in places like Narble are denied any opportunity to advance, the government can use a handful of female politicians from wealthy families, myself included, to pretend the only obstacles to success is their own lack of initiative. Meanwhile, those of us who don't get, use our clout to help powerful men stay in power are denigrated as angry spinsters. I ask you, Mr. President, does anyone care your, your strategist, Mr. Galday, doesn't have a wife? I've been wondering about that, actually. Leave Lucian out of this. You veered off topic. I agree with you completely. Swordland's women deserve better. Um, but I want to be a dictator. I want to be a dictator. Let me be bad. I'll give in to the gossip. I've been wondering about that. All right, Saria, you've made your point. As I was saying, this isn't about whole sword. Uh, this isn't about... Uh, it is, it, isn't it about time whole sword addressed this country's real issues rather than bowing to the wishes of the hawks and the fear mongers? the establishment and diverting yet more resources to the military and law enforcement. Surya, I hate to break it to you, but there's a, a hostile enemy country on our border. We need to fund the military. Our welfare and healthcare and education systems have been decaying since the recession. Swordland's poor communities are losing hope. Hopelessness and a lack of opportunity can drive people to extreme solutions. We're seeing increased crime and domestic violence, and yes, rising inequality between men and women. Lil's will take care of crime. She's an expert on the subject. Those issues must be tackled from different directions. We need to engage it holistically. If only we could stop the recession, create jobs and growth. Those issues can, must be tackled from different directions. We need to engage it holistically. I'm planning to help use it by using an increased budget to improve the quality of health care. That could prove useful, but we need to be doing a lot more. Education has similar issues. There is another subject I want to mention. I've been working on improving the rights of workers in our country and have proposed a draft bill that is currently being reviewed by our party. Mr. Calvin has already backed me and given his support. Swordland has fallen behind in most countries on the subject. It's my responsibility to ensure that this is not the case. Um, what is this again? Rights of workers? There's always room for improvement, and it's good to hear that you are pushing for it. Appreciate the kind words, Mr. President. I will not let you down. It's also a matter of life and death. Every decade we hear about some horrific accident due to employers' disregard for their workers' safety. So, would you back the bill when it arrives on your desk, Mr. President? To make a decision, I would need to evaluate the contents in detail. Understandable. You'll receive all the sections in an outline. It's getting a little cold out here. Let's head inside and continue our discussions. Okay. Tell me about your plans, Ciara. With pleasure. Swordish education is free, but we have a very outdated system that I want to reform. The other important issue is the lack of access to education in rural areas, especially for young girls. Your administration has the power to solve both problems. My highest priority is to get enough funding to be able to build schools in rural areas while I cleanse our education system of its nationalistic indoctrination and sexist teachings. What is the literacy rate of Swordland? The literacy rate of Swordland is at 80%. This is a very good indicator for future growth, but it needs to increase. It's also far lower, lower among girls than boys. If I remember correctly, most of the illiterate areas are Bergia and Agnoland. That's correct, although Lockhaven skews the statistics for the Nargis region, which has a vast number of illiterate citizens. This underlines my point about the lack of access to education. Tell me about the differences between urban and rural education. 
Urban areas have three times the number of schools per 10,000 people compared to rural areas. Rural areas also suffer from a lack of teachers. That's not a very good ratio. Ha ha ha. This is one of the most important problems we face, if not the most important. A huge part of the problem is forget forgotten in terms of welfare. How many students and teachers do we have? Currently, there are about 5 million students, 3 million primary education, 1 million in secondary, and 1 million in tertiary. There are 155,000 teachers. Swordland is full of young and bright minds. It is indeed full of potential. I think there needs to be change in the way, uh, in, in the way of thought. We should help keep. We should help children to question and educate themselves. Thank you, Sarah. I can fill in the blanks from here. I want to hear about the healthcare system. As you wish, Mr. President. Swordland is free healthcare system, except for a few private hospitals operating under it. Most of the populace receives adequate treatment. Health issues primarily appear in rural areas due to lack of quality services. I'm doing my best to ensure that the citizens of all ages receive the best health care they can. I also personally want to solve the high infant mort and mater maternal mortality problem. How many doctors and nurses are employed? We have 31,594 doctors and 73,680 nurses working for the Ministry of Health. That's a high number. I don't want to be rude, but out of those numbers, how many are in urban and rural areas? Good point, Sierra. Pascal? The data shows that per 10,000 people in urban areas, there's about 11 doctors, while in rural areas, there's only three. Treatment time is still too high due to low number of doctors in rural areas, which get barely any proper coverage. How many hospital beds are there per 10,000 citizens? Uh, there are 10 beds per 10,000, 10, which is a very good number according to our comparisons with our neighbors. We see lower numbers in the countries of Agnolia and Valen, but obviously can't match Laspasia or Vagsland. Agnolia and Valen are hardly countries to take a standard, but it's good to know we aren't in a huge health crisis yet. What's the life expectancy and mortality rates? Uh, 65 years and the infant mortality rate is a worrying 85 per 1,000. Births while our maternal mortality rate is 90 per 1,000. Jeez, that's high. Be assured that we're doing everything we can to save mothers and their newborns. We must do everything we can. We're working very hard on improving the quality of life services. Thank you, Pascal. I believe that's everything. Sarah stood up and moved toward the window. She took a deep breath. What is it, Sierra? Look at this impoverished city. The streets full of potholes. The hotel barely functioning. The school half open. This is not just about Sol or even Alfonso failing. This is the decay of Swordlands, forgotten regions. It's been going on for many decades due to the structural corruption which is f fueled by capitalism. Sarah, I'm a capitalist. We're here to change that trend and provide for the people. Let's not get into an ideological debate. We need to focus on the issues. One cannot be separated from the other, Mr. Rain. The issues stem from the ideology. One way or another, we need to transform. Greed and unchecked capitalism will not magically provide for the people. Tell me more about your plans, Sierra. My plans require an increase in the government budget. I aim to solve the problems we highlighted with the allocated money. By building schools in these less fortunate rural areas, though, through fundamental changes to the education system, I will unlock the potential of all our children, boys and girls alike. Improving the situation in rural areas is indeed a good idea. The investment would be in the future of Sorland. Imagine the untapped potential of the youth unlocked. The knowledge and wealth they will generate. Would it promote private education help create additional funds? Yes, but at what cost? I'm not a supporter of the private sector in education because at the end of the day, they're focused on profit first. What are you working toward, Pascal? I personally want to improve the low quality of healthcare in the rural areas. So I created draft plans to increase the salary of doctors and upgrade to equipment at the hospitals. I can do more with an increased budget. Additionally, a privatization plan to promote private investments in the healthcare system could allocate extra funds. Isn't access to healthcare in rural areas an issue? Access is an issue, but not as critical as the quality in these areas. The lack of experienced personnel or equipment causes bad treatment, resulting in many deaths. I do hope to create competition and increase the quality of healthcare with a privatization effort. A private healthcare system would increase the price of treatment and make access worse for the average citizen. The decision not to promote more state control would cost the people dearly. My expectation from our government is that we understand and focus on the needs of the people. Um... 
There are other significant issues that we need to focus on, like security. I appreciate your briefings and plans. We'll reconvene at the budget meeting. Minister Waldai bailed out people in need instead of businesses. Trust me, my priorities are correct. It has shown your dedication, but there are many years ahead of us. This is just the beginning of the journey. No matter how small a step, it is still progress. I think we've covered all the necessary subjects. Thank you for your time. I do hope we won't repeat the same mistakes again and again. Have a good day, Mr. President. Okay. Cool. Oh, we're still in Narble? Labor strike at Gazam? Blue-collar workers at Gazam and Narble have initiated a labor strike. The industrial actions followed disagreement over the wages, working conditions, and workers' rights. The strike has resulted in a temporary disruption to Gazam operations. The dis duration of the strike and the potential impact on Narble's local economy are currently uncertain. Negotiations between Gazam management and the striking workers are reportedly ongoing. Great. A worker strike. I don't remember that before. What's uh, going on here? A young so swords member found decapitated. Jesus. Off with his head. Workers rights bill nears completion. Cable Kelbner, leader of the NFP, has announced today that the NFP is completely against the th any threshold reform. He specifically emphasized that this would lead to an unwanted elements entering the assembly and outright against any change to the 10% threshold. Oh, wow. The repeal of the Energy Protection Act of 1932 fails. The proposal repeal... Re I wonder if that has anything to do with any of my decisions previously. Like, could that go through? The proposal, uh, proposed repeal of the National Protections Act of 1932 was put to a vote in the Assembly today, resulting in its defeat. Despite strong advocacy for the reformer factions of PFJP and beyond, including within the USP under Alvin Calvin, or Alvin Calvin, the majority of the Assembly, led by the USP and NFP, voted against the repeal, 179 to 71. That was not even close. Maintaining the status quo of foreign ownership restrictions of energy companies in Swordland. The result concludes the current attempt to modify the foreign ownership regulations, but does not preclude further legislative efforts to initiate uh, or any initiative by the executive. Morble mine disaster. A coal mine has collapsed and Morble emergency response teams were dispatched immediately. Due to the sheer size of the disaster, additional manpower and supplies were requested from nearby cities. Initial investigations show that an underground fire started due to the neglect and working situations by the Needium Mining Company. Current death toll is 82 and climbing. Bastards. All right, what else is going on in the, in the international scene? Laspasia. Arcasia builds military base in Laspasia. Okay. I don't remember if Aspasia plays a, a meaningful role. In a pivotal meeting convened in Helm, leaders of the CSP have gathered to discuss the intricate issues of Helgeland's security, a matter tinged with historical complexity. The Assembly recalled the 1920s Agnolian annexation of the island during the Vagsland Revolution, underscoring their commitment to address past missteps and ensure a future that respects the rights and aspirations of the island's inhabitants. The summit was also a testament to the is so, but we want Agnolia to be our ally, right? Oh, wait, but Vagsland is different. Never mind. Okay. So that could... That's something we'll need to keep in mind. Now we're going to go meet with uh, Alfonso on Gassam. Alfonso's a piece of shit. Former president who we called out in public. And now he's ruining the, the gas company. After a series of intense meetings with Sierra and Pascal, I decided to take some much-needed rest to recharge. In the capital, Lucian and Pater drove themselves to the challenging task of uniting pro-centralization factions behind drafting of a new constell constellation. Meanwhile, Gus' manager had invited me to visit gas on my headquarters in Narbel. It was situated in Orbnell, a neighborhood in the, on the city outskirts. Next to it was Daminoy Gas Reserve, a prominent natural gas source consisting of four large fields. 
As our motorcade made its way through the Orbnell district, I noted the neighborhood the, uh, the neighborhood state of disrepair. The roads were bumpy and marked with potholes, while the buildings surrounding and uh, uh, us appeared run down, dilapidated. The community had apparently endured a prolonged period of neglect. We came to a halt at the entrance gates of the facility. A sizable mural depicting the Gassum logo had been painted on a nearby wall. Adjacent to the mural, a group of individuals were wearing blue work vests and, assemble, and assembled, holding what looked like protest signs. Serge skillfully parked the car, bringing our journey to a smooth and elegant conclusion. Gus greeted us warmly as we stepped out of the vehicle. Good day, Mr. President. Welcome to Gassum Narble Operations. What's Gus Manager's role again? Minister of Rural Development. Okay. Gus was born in Vags or Vaglin. Old landowners. He eventually supported me after the collapse of the Alfonso cabinet. It's a relief to have a break from all that, even just for a while. I trust Minister Valda and Ben Bineval didn't overwhelm me with their demands. I would be surprised if there were no demands or expectations here today. Good to see you, Gus. I want to talk to you about what we can do to help development here. Perfect. That's exactly what I hope to accomplish during today's discussion. My job is to improve the conditions of places like these. Mr. President, I've been brainstorming a little something. The Grunel Rural Investment Plan. I reckon it's got the potential to breathe new life into our rural communities out in Gruny. We could consider a few things for starters. We could give the farming businesses a boost with some subsidies. Or we could steer toward modernizing existing farms with machinery and tech. Or here's another thought. We could pour our resources into developing crop breeds tailor-made for gurney conditions. If it works out, we could roll out this out across Swordland. He kept talking as he guided me into the gas on building. Mr. President, I get the appeal of the green bill that's been making the rounds in the assembly, but I'm telling you, if we put the brakes on that and funnel those funds into the gurney plan instead, we could make some real strides without spooking any potential investors. It's a tough call, Gus. I need to weigh the environmental implications and the economic benefits. That's all I'm asking for, Mr. President. Just give the plan a fair shake. Our talk was interrupted by noise coming from outside the building. We looked out at the nearest window. A sleek helicopter was cutting through the sky sunlight, glinting off its polished surface as it descended toward us. On it was our next appointment, Alfonso, or El Evald Alfonso. An extravagant show of wealth, isn't it? Hardly seems necessary. It's Alfonso style, Mr. President. He's always enjoyed his toys. Before we meet him, I want you to bring up one more piece of or I wanted to bring up one more piece of assembly business. The workers' rights bill. Look, I'm all for giving hard working how hard working folks what they deserve, but isn't it a bit hasty to push this while we're still stuck in a recession? The way I see it, its short term wins might end up costing us big time in the long run. Interesting perspective, Gus, but in my book, workers' rights aren't up for negotiation no matter the economic climate. I don't even remember, do we have any promises on workers' rights and... I have not gone full Mussolini J Street. I've been fairly pragmatic so far, probably too pragmatic. See where you're coming from, Mr. President, but a prosperous economy helps everybody, the workers included. If we're all sinking, nobody's winning. Please come this way. Evald and I have some exciting news to share with you. I have faith you won't leave us hanging. The discussions were lively during the highway contract award. I'm willing to hear new offers from you. You still got to prove that you make re make returns on your deals. Our investment in Armadine had better make a return. I hadn't seen him since the inauguration. He really pulled back from public life. I'm here because something needs to be done about Narbal's living standards. The fact that you managed to get Ariza entangled in this is surprising. The 
and I'm willing to present them, despite your unfortunate choice of the H3 over the L1. I'm glad your contract you contracted Underhill, by the way. You won't be disappointed. It seems the least risky option. We need safe bets. It's a pity you only had three choices, to be honest. Too few large corporations own too much power. Market economics won't succeed with monopolies. Anyway, I digress. Let's get to the elevator. We push the door open. We walk down another hallway, seemingly in the direction we just come from. Like a maze, isn't it? That's Quinelli architecture for you. The hallways are lined with doors, glass panels in them revealing workers in suits and ties and many, foreign, many of foreign origin, busy in their pristine offices. A stark contrast to the blue-collar workers outside working with machinery, transportation, and maintenance. This whole complex feels very hands-on deck. I can tell an intricate operation when I see one. Why are there so many workers from abroad? The white collars seem to be having it good in here while the majority outs are, are working out in the cold. Why are there so many foreign workers from abroad? The best talent in Sorglin was snatched by the SSC in the 1930s. Most other corporations don't contend, so they had to look elsewhere. Here's the elevator. Ewald ought to, be, ought to be up there. He's already a separate entrance by the helipad. Maybe if we improve our education system, then we can uh, not have to worry about needing to bring in folks from overseas. Ewald Alfonso stood up from his chair. His, he had a perfectly tailored suit and he wore, a ca it wore as casually as pajamas. Gus, you old devil. Oh, look at that handsome, handsome Evald. It's tucks and all. Am I wearing, I hope I'm smoking my pipe. Takes one to know one. As promised, I brought our guest of honor. President Rain. I hope you enjoyed seeing our facilities here. President Alfonso, it's nice to see what you've built from the inside. It's fine. Nothing compared to gas on HQ and whole sort, of course. Still one of the standouts in the Maroon District. Please, have a seat. Let's talk. We sat down. Some snacks and drinks were served. Multiple gas on yearly financial reports were scattered on the table between us. President Rain, I'm here because we have a great opportunity in our hands. A business arrangement that'll benefit Gasom and Swordland alike. I also happen to believe that the current and former presidents of Swordland should stick together and share our experiences. Not everybody has been in our shoes, you know. This is indeed a business arrangement, Evald. Let's focus on that. President sticking together. That's an interesting notion. Hmm. Let's put the past aside, Evald. I have a country to run. That's an interesting notion. Indeed. It's an interesting notion, President Rain. It's a shame that politics often stand in the way. Could do with a bit more of that, couldn't we? Former presidents, current presidents, all pulling for, together for Swordland. As we discuss the future of Swordland, it is a paramount that I comprehend your vision. The trajectory that you set for this country will inevitably impact not just Gassam, but also Swordland's position on the global stage. I confess I've been following the news from the Maroon Palace closely since leaving office. I'm hearing that your economic interests seem to align with mine. Even so, that you have chosen to align with the West, it's a path I myself considered while drafting my foreign policy. On the other hand, I have not heard any indication of your leanings regarding the Kingdom of Rizia's interest in investing in Gassam. Have you yet to receive a comprehensive briefing on the matter? I prefer to maintain a careful approach and not make premature commitments. I'd rather not hand over crucial components of our energy industry to foreign en entities. While the proposed prospect of collaborating with a wealthy nation like Rizzi is not unappealing, I'm suspicious of their underlying intentions. Hmm. I haven't received a briefing on the matter. I prefer to maintain a careful approach and not make premature commitments. I respect your prudence, but let's not forget that fortune often favors the bold. Your concerns, Mr. President, remind me of a time when I was working with OMC, OMEC. We were bringing in foreign investments to revitalize the local companies. There were protests, people who were scared of change, who thought we were selling out. But we weathered the backlash and stood by our decisions. Years later, those same people saw the benefits, the jobs we created, the growth we spurred. 
Change is always met with resistance, but in the end, the results, it's the results that matter. Change may be met with resistance, Gus, but it is our job to ensure that the people are with us on the journey. We can't disregard their concerns. Your experience with OMEC is valuable, Gus. We need to stay the course and see our decisions through. It's true. OMEC was great learning experience. A lot of sleepless nights, tough negotiations, even a few broken friendships. But I'd do it all over again if it means seeing our country prosper. As Gus finished his point, we suddenly heard the faint wailing of sirens in the distance. He waited for the noise to, to fade before continuing. Back to the topic at hand. It seems we're at a crossroads with Gassum. The numbers tell us a tale of struggle and potential. No need to sugarcoat it, Gus. Gassum is teetering on the edge of a cliff. Without significant restructuring, the firm risks plunging into insurmountable debt. My old friend Ewald reached out to me for assistance. Out of respect for our shared history and my small stake in the company, I couldn't refuse. I've always believed in the power of networking, and I'm sure you've heard of Rusty Monaro, chairman and CEO of Rizian Royal Gold. Rusty and I go way back. He's done quite... So is Rizia like Saudi Arabia then? The Taurus family, the Rizian government, it seems like a powerful alliance you formed. With all due respect, Gus, I'm not thrilled that you got Swordland in bed with a monarchy. The kingdom's connections to Rumberg isn't particularly reassuring either. So I've heard, Gus, I understand the need for strategic alliances, but let's remember our own interests and values. Absolutely. We're in this for Swordland first and foremost, but remember, in the world of the International Business Alliances are tools, not uh, not ties that bind us. Thanks to Gus Rizian, Ru, Gus's Rizian connections, investors from the kingdom are now interested in Gazam, a development that could steer us clear of the looming crisis. We've got an amazing opportunity here. The demand for gas is steadily increasing from both in, international partners and the Swordish state. All, of, all we have to do is ensure a consistent supply. The trouble is that right now, some of our fields are operating at only half their capacity due to resource limitations. But we have significant potential for expansion, including two new fields that haven't even been tapped. With the right amount of investment, we can expand resource extraction, effectively fulfilling rising demand and ensuring long-term stability and profitability. But that requires us to be willing to take risks and weather the storm. Now that's a legacy worth striving for, wouldn't you agree? I'm intrigued by the untapped fields. What's the potential return if we invest in these new areas? That's a risk, Mr. Alfonso. What if the investment doesn't pay off? Will the investment help keep Gassum from having to downsize its operations? I've seen enough corporate bailouts and handouts to know that it's always the big business that benefits all the common people are left to suffer. I'm intrigued by these untapped fields. What's the potential return if we invest in these new areas? With proper investment and development, we project extremely high returns in the first five years alone. The sound of sirens briefly distracted us. Through the windows, we saw police cars driving down the street adjacent to the Gassum zone. Our meeting today has only underscored the deep divide between us. I'm afraid this renders any potential business partnership untenable. Really? What have I said that... I appreciate your optimism, Mr. President. All this particular deal may not have worked out... I'm confused. Where did I make a decision? Sure, Gus, I trust your judgment. That may be a mistake, but... If you promise not to tighten current restrictions on the Energy Protection Act, we can reconsider our stance and keep this deal on the table. What deal?
I can assure you the EPA restrictions won't get any stricter. Gentlemen, after careful consideration, I've decided to step away from this deal. Well, the EPA, repealing the EPA failed. I don't plan to pass restrictions, so I guess they won't get any stricter. The Swordish government chooses to invest, it would gain a voice in the broader company decisions, even as a minority stakeholder. The government could either liquidate its shares at a future date or continue to reap the long-term profits. Uh, we'll co-invest with Rizia, we'll share the costs and stakes. We're investing a load and Swordland will provide the majority of the funds and Gus will tell Rizia to back off. Yeah, we'll invest alone. I don't want to get foreign ownership of this. I'll spend my money. If I can go into debt, we can fund the military with debt and hopefully this investment pays off. Workers of Gazam need better housing, access to health care, and opportunities for education. As the leading industry, there can't it can't ignore its responsibility. Which is more expensive? Yes, but its shareholders are now Swordland. approached Alfonso and leaned in to whisper something into his ear. Ewald nodded solemnly and gazed meeting my, his gaze me, meeting mine with serious intensity. Gentlemen, it seems we have an unexpected situation outside. Some protesters from the labor union have blocked the main vehicular exits. Catherine Horton and Denise Stoller seem to be leading the group. It would be difficult to leave the way we came without causing trouble. Well, that's a pickle. What's our move, Ewald? I've got a helicopter ready. We can leave undetected and avoid the chaos and potential danger. A helicopter that might be a safer option. I think we should face the crowd head on. That's your prerogative, Mr. President. Following the violent of lates, I heavily recommend against facing any crowd. Mr. President, I advise you to leave via the helicopter, just in case. I can stay back and update the crowd on the discussions today. Sir Drudgston. Mr. President, I've discussed the situation with the Presidential Guard and the police security. They're advising us not to go out the way we came in. More police are on the way. You must make a decision, Mr. President. Everybody waited, the tense silence in the room and stark contrast to the buzz of the ever-growing crowd outside. We're going to go out by the crowd, folks. We're now owners of Gasom, right? So that should give us some say in doing some stuff. Blue to Freedom Front under new leadership? Uh, okay, that's not great. The terrorists have a new leader. Hopefully he doesn't want to exert his authority and power. Fly away in the helicopter, address the protesters, and leave via car. Hell yeah. Give me a speech. Let me yell at people. Or whatever. As we stepped outside the towering front gate of gas on facility, I immediately became aware of how tense the situation was. Gus Manager stood to my right, his silhouette barely indistinguishable from the monolithic edifice behind us. Serge stood to my left, his eyes scanning the crowd with the precision of a hawk. The gas arm security had drawn their weapons in anticipation of forming a bristling wall around the perimeter. My presidential guard, in stark contrast, stood tall and unflinching at the entrance, shielding us from the sea of angry workers around us. The shouts of the crowd were deafening, the hostility palpable. 
Staller and Horton stood at their forefront with fire in their eyes. With a deep breath, I prepared to address them. Gus extended a megaphone to me. My fellow swords, our presence today is not a guarantee of instant change, but rather an effort to better understand the complexities of the issues at hand. Let us turn this impasse into an opportunity, a chance for real impactful change. We are here to make that happen. I haven't even, like, you just showed up. All talk and no action. Isn't it, Mr. President? How long must the workers wait for real change? Okay. You're an, a lawyer and an academic. What do you know about the struggles of the working class? Lack of commitment to education? I haven't even been given a chance. What negligence of the healthcare system? I haven't even been given a chance. The locals of Narbel have suffered under the impact of Gasom for years. What concrete steps is Gasom going to take for the benefit of the local community? I'm not going to dignify that with a response. Gasom has done much for this, this shithole region. Oh! Wow. I understand your frustrations. Be assured I will push harder in the negotiations. The well-being of Narble's workers is my priority. Dennis and uh, Miss or Katrina, you guys uh, are kind of annoying.
Could you shed some light on the possible deal between the Sordish government and Gassan? What role does the Kingdom of Rizia play in this arrangement? With all due respect to the kingdom, I believe Swordland knows what's best for Swordish companies. That's why our government is investing in Gassam alone. A surprising but potentially promising decision, Mr. President. Let's hope your confidence isn't misplaced. Encouraging, President Rain. As long as your government is drive to recoup your investment doesn't take precedence over Gassam's struggling labor force. Close by, I noticed a terse exchange between security official from Gassam and a member of the Presidential Guard. Serge craned his neck to, fa to face his face deep in concentration as he listened to their whispers. Mr. President, the situation is growing increasingly vo volatile. I recommend that we expedite your departure. We must prioritize your safety. Aren't you, won't running away from the protesters make them angrier? Serge is right, Mr. President. The crowd won't get any calmer if you stick around. You've got to get to safety. Leaving so soon, Rain? I guess you know when you've been defeated. You can't even face your own people, can you, Mr. President? We expected better. You speak of double standards and yet fail to understand the complexity of governance. It's easy to criticize from the sidelines, but real change requires pragmatism, not idealism. You claim to advocate for the workers, yet you undermine our efforts to better their condition. Shouldn't you be supporting the initiative we fought for instead of spreading discontent? utopia you dream of won't materialize my mere rhetoric or attacking those striving for change. It requires understanding the potential. One final question. What is your personal relationship with Ewar? Out of nowhere, a man lunged toward me from the crowd. Before I could react, Surge sprang in front of me. He swiftly tackled the man to the ground and pinned his hands behind his back. Give him hell, Surge! <laughs> Freeze in panic? Now that's not, uh, everybody calm down. Surge left my dazed attacker on the ground and turned to the guards with a look of authority I've never seen before. Protect the president! As the voice carried over the screams of the crowd, the guards tightened their circle around me, hurriedly pushing me toward the safety of the convoy. Everyone remain calm! Police and security forces rushed into the melee, swirling batons with indiscriminate ferocity. The red youth rushed at them head on. Into the car, Mr. President. We are leaving now. Katrina and Dennis raised their hands in a plea for calm, their world, words nearly lost amidst the turmoil. Stop the cops. This isn't going to help. Back off. You're only making things worse. Staff and I were swiftly escorted into the convoy. The protesters and police scattered as our vehicle plowed through the crowd. Plowed through the crowd? Their screams rescinded into the background as we left the chaotic scene behind. Surge! Well, there you have it. My bodyguard is uh, kicking ass and taking names. He ends up in the paper for being a famous uh, working class hero, despite the fact that he's running down working class individuals uh etc nonetheless uh, an interesting end this whole gas um, storyline is new that wasn't in the original game so that's all new content uh but i'm enjoying myself quite a bit with the suzerain playthrough i'm curious about your guys thoughts add them down below and without further ado i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up here so hope you guys enjoyed until next time this is the historical gamer saying thank you for watching and i'm out <laughs>